I'm Gayatri Basumatari from Blue One Inc. Blue One Inc. is a publishing house that aims to invoke, experience, share, and celebrate the power of the written world. It gives me a great pleasure to welcome you all to the launch of Jinan KB's newest book, Seeing with Hands. We have the privilege of being in the company of the author himself. Jinan KB is a renowned designer and educator who challenges the general notions of learning and redefines them. Taking inspiration from indigenous communities and artisans, he emphasizes the significance of holistic knowledge creation and autonomous learning in children. With decades of research, Jinan KB strives to enable individuals to reclaim their innate cognitive abilities and advocates for nurturing environments that support natural learning. Jinan KB's book, Seeing with Hands, stems from a one-of-a-kind experiment and in-depth research conducted by the author and his foundation, Existential Knowledge Foundation. It explores how children grasp the real world through drawing. This book challenges the general notion of drawing, redefines it as a cognitive activity, and establishes the necessity of understanding it in continuation with children's real-life experiences. I began to work with illiterate communities in uh, 1990, uh, 1989, 1990. That was the time when I began to work with illiterate communities. And that time I had absolutely no idea about drawing at all. I thought it is art and all that. No, I never even thought about it. So it is only in 2014 that I suddenly understood that no drawing is also a cognitive activity. So it's a long, almost 24 years that I had, I absolutely, see, this is the blindness that I'm talking about of modern man, you know, a blindness that doesn't allow him to see what is happening right in front of him. This is the problem of modernity, that things are there, but you don't see because you're already framed by modern, modern, uh, you know, worldview to see the world in a certain way. Actually, I uh, accidentally came across this idea that drawing is a cognitive activity. Uh, and, and the reason was that I was actually spending time with illiterate communities and children. And I found that, uh, that modern people have completely misunderstood learning uh, because they, they read books and assume that they have understood. Whereas illiterate communities don't read, they observe the world and create knowledge. That is when I first shifted my uh, understanding of what actually constitutes uh, learning and how knowledge gets created. You see, in the modern context of education, we never discuss about how knowledge is created. It's all about transferring secondhand information and we think that is knowledge. That is what actually made me go deeper into how do you create knowledge at all? You know? So when I lived with the rural tribal people, illiterate communities, I understood that because they are using their senses, they are authentically, autonomously understanding the world. That is when I began to observe children and I found that they are also equipped by life to understand the world. And senses are given to observe, sense and make sense. Uh, so this was the basic background of my research, which I started in 1991. So, uh, you see, there are many, many incidences that made me understand, you know, made me understand that something is wrong with me, the modern man, and not with the illiterate communities. Because all educated are made to believe that, that we are creative, we are educated, you know, and we are intelligent, whereas the illiterate people need our help, and they are inferior. And of course, with the same assumption I went, so it was first time in Nagaland that I realized this is absolutely wrong. Because in Nagaland, I found that the, the women there, uh, the way they were completely freely moving around, you know, I realized that, no, the modern Indian society has not understood, you know, it, it, they should be learning from the Nagas. That's what I felt. Yeah. And so that completely opened my eyes to some of the things. Uh, 
see knowledge creation is something that every living being is doing all human all living beings are cognitive beings beings that are understanding the world making sense of the world and living harmoniously to sustain life that's the bottom line and human beings are also doing that in that context what education has a role is something that we should we should actually check you know how a uh, complete misunderstanding about what exactly constitutes knowledge how it gets created is is the the whole crisis of modern humans that we we are denying our cognitive right and cognitive autonomy and then making making people into second hand people you know i i would say clones or zombies who are only made to believe in whatever another person is writing and telling you so this crisis uh, is something that needs to be addressed and so we can actually use drawing as a temporary means it's i'm not suggesting that you know every child should start drawing you know that's not what i'm trying to say but if you actually look at the uh, the the uh, drawing as a community activity as a, as an activity that human beings did you will find that drawing is done by very very few people drawing is not a activity that are, that that everybody practices if you look into tradition there were people who are meant to draw and perform like any other crafts a potter or a weaver so they were few people who did drawing and but for, we are completely misunderstanding that everybody used to draw and that is why they came and did drawing you know these are all our silly misinterpretations you know uh, we are actually extrapolating everything based on what we are today which i think is absolutely wrong in 2011 i got an opportunity to work in a school and i called it reimagining schools which means completely relook at uh school school as as a place where children are uh, you know have an opportunity to understand the world autonomously which means no teaching no interfering let children do whatever they feel like and these children actually belong to the uh, somewhat non literate communities uh, in the outskirts of pune so children actually was completely free even at their house itself nobody unlike the modern parenting or modern parents nobody was after children telling them this you do that you don't do that kind of things so so when in the school they were able to respond very spontaneously with things you know so and what we did was that we made available all kinds of things to them meaning we did not have a waste paper basket we kept everything free so that they can use whatever they feel like so in the 3 years they they actually Uh, started doing spontaneously what they were supposed to do with life you know so they started creating houses and all kinds of things meanwhile they were also drawing uh, but we did not actually uh, you know especially i did not spend much time trying to understand what they were drawing because my interest was to observe what they were making you know what we call as play but so after 3 years when i looked at all the drawings i found a very interesting pattern emerging uh which which clearly showed that drawing is actually a, a cognitive process to understand the world and it was in continuation with what they experience what they recreate through play and making of toys and what they draw so there's a clear correlation between experience uh play plus toy making and drawing one very important thing that i found was that the children are completely free see the difference between modern notion of freedom and indigenous notion of freedom is this that in modern notion we assume that we give freedom you know you give freedom but in indigenous communities it's an existential truth it's an existential reality nobody ever talks about freedom because freedom is given so you don't need a word to tell that now you are free you are free you don't have to have a word for that you know so this is a fundamental shift that i realized and so children are never said no children never ask permission and i think this is absolutely important for your mental health for your psychological health that you don't have to ask permission you have freedom not with as a concept not as a word but in the level of being and this is what actually indigenous communities uh, you know celebrated you know and i think that is why they they do not have 
you know, mental disease and, you know, all kinds of traumas that the modern man has because he is absolutely free from, in a real sense. So, if you look at the importance of drawing in the present context, the two-dimensional experience of the world of, of, is a new experience for human beings. It is only after the printing press, the printed books came in and reading became a day-to-day -day activity that human beings began to encounter two-dimensional realm, two-dimensional space. You know, till then we are actually in, in exploring or engaging with the three-dimensional space, you know, the world that we are seeing. So there is definitely a shift from, especially uh, during the time of cognitive development in the initial phase, if children are ex getting exposed to two-dimensionality, then they are going to rewire their brain to engage with two-dimensionality. You know, so drawing is actually a tool to connect the real three-dimensional world into the newly introduced two-dimensional space. Whatever children do, as what we call as play, is nothing but an attempt to understand the real world and recreate it through making of toys. So first we destroy their cognitive activity, this cognitive activity by providing them with ready-made toys and creating play as adult-defined. You know? so, so drawing is nothing but, art is nothing but an extension of our misunderstanding on this, you know, a continuation of how we destroyed true cognition of understanding the real world. So, it's, it's, so the importance is that actually children need total autonomy, not only to draw, but that's the second thing. First to be recreate the world in the way that they are exploring, you know? So they are playfully recreating the world by making, you know, making their toys and all that. And in, at the same time, they would also feel like drawing because if there are, you know, they're, they're engaging with books and all that, naturally they will get into drawing. Uh, so in that context, drawing is important to connect the 3D and 2D. That is the purpose actually. Otherwise, we, they don't need any kind of education because that is truly harmful for children. What they, actually what should happen is there, all children are born with inherent capacity to be the world. I think that is what we should call, not to know the world, but to be the world. And that beingness is established when children have autonomy, their senses are functioning and they are connecting with the world that is happening around them, you know? And they are engaging with true life, not with people who are reading and writing, but with true life, the way plants grow, the, play, the way the animals are there, you know? True nature is what they should be exploring, they should be engaging with. That will awaken their own life and they will become part of life. That is, that is the fundamental issue that, that has completely been destroyed by introducing reading and writing in schools right from childhood. Because in, in modernity, nobody has ever talked about drawing as a cognitive activity. I, I'm talking about for children, you know, children spontaneous activity to understand the real world in terms of two dimensional space. So, I had to really look at what, what was the way in which drawing was or art was looked at in the modern context. And I found that uh, drawing is treated as skill, treated as self-expression. You know, everything has to do with yourself and your skill. And what this does is that only the skilled people, which, which would be normally three, three, four percentage in a, in a classroom, become artists. And, and 95, 98 percent of them hate this whole idea of art. Because and they are made to believe that they are not artists and they don't know anything. So that is the reason that, that is because you are focusing on skill and focusing on what you're drawn. But actually, if you don't interfere with children at all, their focus will be on what they are observing and not they are drawing. You know, and observation is something that every child is doing. So if you don't interfere at all, if you don't make judgments about whether the drawing is right, whether the drawing is good, etc., the children will naturally. Uh, you know, focus on observation and, and, and the real world and drawing just as a means to understand the real world. So this is some, something that has been completely misunderstood in the modern context. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, this whole drama of art now getting into education is destroying it further, actually.
you know, art-based education is actually destroying art and education. We will have to look into the fundamental crisis of modernity uh, to understand this, actually. See, the whole fundamental crisis of modernity is that we have fragmented the body and mind, denied the senses, and given importance only to thinking, language, and mind. So naturally, what it has done is that it has fragmented an, an integral activity of a being uh, in which beauty is actually part of your being. It is not an activity to be done and exhibited as art. So, and if you can actually look at when did actually art come into schools, you know, very, very late, which also means that it is an afterthought, you know, initially nobody ever thought that, you know, art should be there. Then I think many people found a lot of unemployed artists. So that's probably the reason why they thought there should be art in the classroom, because we see most of the activities for children are actually to address unemployment and not, uh, you know, not to really address the uh, the real issue of what is learning and how to learn should, you know, knowledge and all that. Uh, so modernity has fragmented knowledge, beauty, and values into three different categories. In fact, an integral being uh, is responding to an existential, three existential questions, which are what, why and how and these three is actually one is cognition other one is value and third one is beauty this is an integral response to life and and so beauty is actually that uh, uh, you know that actually functions in your realm of feeling which which uh, you know which also uh, economizes your action and of course, this this may strange find it very strange because this is an area that hardly anybody has explored. Uh, so my exploration has been: what is the biological roots of cognition, beauty, and value? These three are not human invention. Uh, value is the fundamental base in which life is functioning. Without this sustainability value, sustaining life, value, life cannot exist at all. And, and to be in harmony, to be in balance, all that is actually dictated by life. It's nothing human made things. And meanwhile, I was also studying the impact of literacy on consciousness, you know, how literacy rewires the brain. And one other thing, and I had also understood that the whole modern notions of art is completely wrong because it, it is actually moved from the realm of sensing and feeling into the realm of thinking. It became a mental activity. Uh, and then I also began to explore the whole origin of the modern notions of art. And I found that the very idea of self-expression was came about only in the 18th century. Till then, there was nothing called self-expression. So I think uh, in the... the uh, and also, it, it's interesting that it is in the 18th century, there is something called age of reason in the Western paradigm. And I combined these two and realized that actually the, the development of self as an egoistic uh, and individualistic being is invented by the West because of literacy and because of the rise of reasoning. So th that is uh, when I really began to look at what actually... Uh, what damages does the idea of art does to the cognitive process? And I used to read a lot of books, of course, Western, you know, jargon, sociology, and all that kind of things, and to understand Indian, uh, you know, society. This is the absurd idea that that we don't even have our own ways to look at our culture that our sociology, anthropology, philosophy, everything we read is based on how the West has seen the world. And that is, these are the frame that is given to us to see the world, you know. So I decided to completely stop reading and start looking at, uh, you know, observing what people are doing. And, but, you know, I must tell you one very, very important book that helped me to do this. This is Walden Pond by Thoreau. And, and while I was reading that, I only read just maybe the one third of that book. He was actually uh, talk, talking about his experience of 
living near the Walden Pond. Suddenly, I realized that you know he's talking about his fantastic experience, and here I am staying in a beautiful village with uh, you know mountains all around, beautiful river nearby, and every person doing activity right from morning till evening, green fields. I actually am sitting in the room and reading books and thinking about experience. So this contradiction suddenly hit me, and that day I decided to stop reading completely, and uh, I, I stepped out and started you know. observing so this i think was a very very crucial very important thing that i i did to myself because you know when people say how did you began to explore and understand knowledge i would say by stop reading completely we are we are actually encountering an existential crisis crisis of ecological crisis but also a crisis of destruction of the being that we are far more alienated far more destructive to ourselves primarily because of this fragmentation of body and mind so to me what is really important is to um, of course look at education but look at the whole social uh, dynamics or and and the way we are living uh, that needs to be addressed as we as we look at education why is that we are producing humans who are anti life you know why is that we are we are producing humans who are fragmented who are absolutely not at all interested in anything that they are doing so these are fundamental questions we should ask and then maybe look at what is it that education does that destroys people so the the whole problem is that modernity has become completely human centric and they seem to think that they are the ones who are inventing everything thinking everything knowledge is for them value only humans have you know so so i think the 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 need for reimagination is far more fundamental it is really not a question of education it's a a question of existence itself i think the seeing with hands if you know if it is read properly it is for everybody who is encountering modern crisis it is people who are actually trying to understand what is wrong with modernity how body and mind is fragmented uh, so it is not just parents parents are unfortunately it is only the parents who are now interested in understanding children afresh because the cognitive scientists have assumed that they have understood children and the modern education is about understood that they wonder you know they know what children are uh, so the, it might take a time but i think it is important that anybody who is concerned about modern human crisis must read uh, you know go through the drawings it is really a not book for reading but for seeing because there are hundreds and hundreds of drawings that we have kept for people to actually observe and see that why children draw at all you know so uh, of of course uh, at an immediate thing parents will be of parents could be the first uh, people to engage with this so that, because they are interested in their children and of course people in 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 education in cognition cognitive psychology uh, you know activists who were trying to talk about children's rights without knowing what is an inherent existential right of a child they would be you know made helpful for them also our deep gratitude to jnan kb for this insightful conversation about a new approach to understanding children and their real life experiences at blue one inc our aim is to bring depth and truth to culture business education politics and human relationships we believe books open windows to the world and have the power to transform lives for more information about blue one inc and its remarkable literary works i encourage you to explore our website at blueone.in thank you all for your presence and support